Hi, this is Karthik Rangappa and welcome to another Varsity video. In the previous video, we discussed the origin of debt and we also discussed two most popular debt funds, namely the liquid fund and the overnight fund. In this video, we will take the conversation forward. I'll introduce two important debt fund jargons and also discuss a few more debt funds. Let's start with the maculate duration of a bond. Let's assume that you invest rupees 10 lakhs in a bond maturing in two years. Let's also assume that the bond pays an interest payment or a coupon payment once every three months. And at the end of two years, you also expect the principal amount to be returned. I know this may sound a bit weird, but if you were to do all the bond math to figure out how long it would take for you to recover the invested amount, then the answer won't be two years, but it will be a number slightly less than two years let's say 1.8 years. In this case, 1.8 is considered the duration of the bond. The duration indicates how long it would take for you to recover your invested amount. And this is a very important bond metric. Of course, I've explained duration in great detail on Varsity Web. I would encourage you to read through that to get a better understanding. The next term that I want to talk about is the modified duration of a bond. Modified duration, measured in years, is the sensitivity of the bond's price to change in interest rates. Bond prices and interest rates are directly proportional. Assume that the bond's modified duration is 3.2. In this case, a 1% increase or decrease in the interest rate will increase or decrease the bond's price by 3.2%. Likewise, a 1.5% increase or decrease in interest rate will increase or decrease the bond price by 4.8%. Generally, higher the duration of the bond, higher is the sensitivity to change in interest rates. By this measure, let's say a change in 1% in the interest rate has a far greater impact on the bond price of a long duration fund compared to a short duration fund. Now, one of the reasons why you need to understand these jargons is that SEBI Circular defines all debt funds on basis of these terms. For example, check out the formal definition of an ultra short duration fund. According to this circular, an ultra short duration fund can invest in debt market instruments, basically commercial papers and bonds, with a maximum duration of three to six months. Debt instruments with three to six month duration implies short maturities. For instance, take a look at the portfolio of DSP's ultra short duration fund. The portfolio has money market instruments which have maturities ranging from 1 day to 365 days. There are something called as T-reps which are basically overnight borrowing. And then there are bonds and NCDs with slightly longer maturities than one year. Now you may wonder how bonds and NCDs with maturities over one year make their way into an ultra short duration fund. Well that's because SEBI defines the duration of an ultra short duration fund to have maturities between 3 to 6 months. The definition is at an aggregate portfolio level and they don't specify on individual script level. So it's really the fund manager's job to ensure that all the investments are balanced and the overall maturity of the portfolio is within the prescribed range. So ultra short duration fund is good for anyone looking to park funds for maybe a period of 1 to 2 years. If your time period is less than a year, then you're better off with an overnight fund or maybe a liquid fund. And on the return side, it's reasonable to expect ultra short duration funds to yield close to bank rates. Let me talk about another interesting fund before we wrap up our discussion on debt funds. It's called the credit risk fund. Have a look at this extract of SEBI circular to see how SEBI defines a credit risk fund. SEBI here specifies that an AMC running a credit risk fund should invest 65% of its assets in corporate bonds, which are AA and below in investment grade. So for example, if the credit worthiness of a company issuing a bond is very good, then the bonds will be rated high, maybe AAA. But if the credit worthiness is questionable, then the bonds issued by such companies will also have lower credit rating, maybe AA or BB. AA indicates not so good credit worthiness. So given this, a credit risk fund predominantly invests in AA or lower graded bonds. This means the bonds carry maximum credit risk. Hence, the probability of both default by the bond issuer and credit downgrade is very high. 
Credit downgrade means a double A bond slipping into double B, which also means the price of the bond will take a massive hit, resulting in a big dip in NAVs. Also, do remember, SEBI simply says 65% should be in double A. There is no specification for the balance 35% of the assets. The credit risk fund is where the fund manager cuts themselves loose to chase returns. The objective of a credit risk fund is to take in as much risk as possible to ensure that the returns are commensurate with the risk. By virtue of this, the fund manager will lend to companies whose credit worthiness is questionable. Now, why would the fund manager deliberately lend to a corporate who is unlikely to pay back? The fund manager does so because the corporate in need of the fund says, give me all the money and I'll compensate you with a higher interest rate. You see the point here, right? The corporate entity wanting to borrow money has to entice the fund manager by giving a higher interest rate. When the fund manager lends to such a company, the fund manager hopes the borrowing entity will repay and honor the interest payment regularly. Fund manager also hopes that the corporate entity improves its credit worthiness. If the credit worthiness improves, then the rating of the bond or the paper will also improve. If the rating improves, the bond price goes up and hence the NAV. The point is most of the investors in debt funds invest in a debt fund not to chase returns, but maybe to park excess funds and maybe expect a return close to the bank rates. If return chasing is the objective, then you're far better off doing that in an equity fund than in a debt fund. When you're chasing returns, you anyway have to ensure that your investments are given enough time. You're better off giving time to your equity fund than a debt fund. Use debt fund to preserve your capital and not to chase return. And for this reason, I would never invest in a credit risk fund myself. And I'll leave you with that thought. But just as a reminder, we've spoken about a handful of debt funds in this video and the previous video. I would highly encourage you to visit Varsity and read about more debt funds that we've covered there. Do comment and let me know if you have any queries. I'll see you guys in the next video.